Look here. I, I go, look, look here. Look, listen. Uh, I, I'm not going to spend as much time talking about the South Carolina Gamecocks roster and, and who they lost and who they have, as I have on some of these other teams because there's just no point. And, and these are not trash talking videos, but there's just no point in spending that much time uh, on South Carolina like I have some of these other teams. And when we put the schedule up on the screen and go through it, you'll see why. But in today's video, we got the South Carolina Gamecocks coming up best case, worst case for the 2019 season. Uh, let's go. Hey, good morning. It's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, and I'm live for you on YouTube today. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also. And two, in addition to all that as well. Yeah, means a lot to me. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year, and sometimes they're even watchable. Yes, I'm a Georgia Bulldogs fan, uh, but I do really two different types of videos here. I, I do some trash talking videos, yes, where I'm a huge Georgia homer and just bash other teams nonstop. Uh, but about the half, about half the videos are, are are straight down the middle, and these best case worst case videos are those types of, of videos. So this isn't coming from a biased Georgia fan perspective. This is my honest analysis of the uh, South Carolina Gamecocks chances during the regular season in the, in the 2019 season. Um, coming up, give this video a thumbs up if you're a, a Carolina fan or just excited about the 2019 season. I would really appreciate it and it helps me out a lot. Live show tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. We do the live show every Tuesday and Thursday night at 10 p.m. during the off season. During the season, we add some additional shows, but right now, Tuesday night, Thursday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, it's a call-in show. We have a good time on there. We take calls from, uh, from fans from all over. If you haven't checked those out yet, uh, you really should. We have a good time. Anyway, uh, but let's get on with the video. I'm going to be honest here. It's going to be hard to do this version, uh, the South Carolina version of this best case, worst case video, without it coming off like a trash talking video. Um, I'm not very high in general on South Carolina for 2019. I've been saying that really since last season ended. I was really high on them last year. I, I had them winning as many as 10 games last year and finishing second in the East, uh, a dark horse to win the East. Of course, that ended up not happening. More on that in a little bit. Um, but I, I just have had a bad feeling about South Carolina's uh, 2019 season uh, for a couple of months now. After looking over some things over the last couple of days, uh, the schedule, uh, some roster stuff, just some things going on there, uh, I haven't found anything that's made me feel any better about South Carolina's chances in 2019. I'm just being honest here. Uh, but we're going to do this the same way we always do it, so let's talk a little bit about what happened last year. A lot of hype heading into the season last year for South Carolina, right? A lot of people had them finishing second in the East. A lot of people had them picked as a dark horse to compete and maybe win the East. Uh, almost everybody had them winning nine games, some 10, uh, some more for the delusional ones. South Carolina fans spent all offseason talking about week two last year, right? I've been doing this for five, what, five years now. Uh, last offseason was by far the loudest and cockiest I have ever heard South Carolina fans in the five years that I've been doing this here on YouTube. I expect this offseason to be one of the quietest, but South Carolina fans were very loud uh, last offseason, and a lot of their chatter was focused around week two at home against the Georgia Bulldogs. Of course, Georgia had made the national title game the year before and won the SEC. High expectations for Georgia heading into last year. They had Then they had to go to Columbia week two. A lot was made of that game in the offseason, um, not just by South Carolina fans. There were even ESPN analysts and some other people that fell for the trick and thought South Carolina had a chance in that game. I, I honestly believe South Carolina felt they had a chance in that game. And of course, we all know by now how that game went. You came out and you sort of, you never really had a chance in that game. Uh, it got away from you in the second half and ended up being not close at all. Um, sort of a disappointing home loss to kind of start your season there in week two. And I think that just took all the steam out of South Carolina for the 2018 season. And they sort of coasted uh, downhill the rest of the season after that. You finished seven and six. Uh, seven and seven and five in the regular season. Lost your uh, bowl game in humiliating fashion. Blown out in the Belk Bowl, twenty-eight to nothing. A complete no-show there. Uh, of course, we mentioned losing to UGA in week two. You lost to Kentucky for what the fourth or fifth year in a row. 
Uh, you lost to Texas A&M. You've still never beat them uh, since they've joined the SEC, I don't believe. And, and you play them every year. Uh, that's your cross-division um, rivalry, and you've yet to beat them, I, I believe. They beat you again. You lost Florida. Uh, you sort of had Florida. They came back on you. That was an interesting game, but you lost it. And then, of course, Clemson just absolutely steamrolled you. Um, but, uh, yes, we have heard you over the last three months talking about the fact that you threw for 600 yards on them. Congratulations. You still got blown out. Not a good year. Uh, seven and six. Now, you made a bowl game for the, for the third year in a row under Will Muschamp, which is good. But based off the expectations you had, you had heading into 2018, this was a horrible season. Um, all right, so what's it going to look like this year? Well, you got Jake Bentley back again. Uh, this guy's the South Carolina version of JT Barrett, ain't he? Not any good and won't go away. Uh, the Brett Favre of college football minus the upside. But Brett Favre's the all-time leader in the NFL in interceptions. Uh, Hall of Famer, though, because he threw a ton of touchdown passes when he won a Super Bowl. Jake Bentley's got the interceptions down, but that's it, right? Uh, Jake Bentley's never seen a receiver that was too covered to throw the ball to. This guy thinks he can make all the throws. He just he just can't. He hasn't gotten any better, in my opinion, since the day he stepped foot on campus. Is that Jake Bentley's fault? Is it Will Muschamp's fault? Is it the offensive coordinator, the quarterback coach's fault? Uh, that's for you guys to argue and debate in the comments section, but to me, he looks exactly the same as the day he stepped foot on campus, um, which isn't what you want. Who's his backup? It doesn't really matter. You guys are going to go with Bentley again. I mean, he's been there this long, going into his fourth year as the starter now. He's not going to get benched bar an injury. Uh, but, I mean, who are the backups? Joyner and Halinski? Jay Urich? No one's ever heard of these people. Uh, Halinski and Joyner, I, I guess, do have some upside, but they're young guys. Well, one of them, I believe, is a sophomore or a redshirt freshman or maybe a redshirt sophomore. Halinski, true freshman. We'll see. Joyner likes to run around, I think. Halinski, I mean, we'll see. I don't really think either one of those two guys are ready right now to lead an SEC offense. Um, the ball is pretty much in Bentley's court this season, in my opinion. Running back, uh, you don't have any. Again, a theme since Will Muschamp got there. South Carolina has had a hard time finding a consistent, good running back under Will Muschamp in South Carolina. They've, they've yet to have one. I, I don't think they've had a thousand yard rusher under Will Muschamp and just haven't been good overall at the running back, uh, at the running back position. Who's there? Rico Dowdle? Uh, who is that? No one knows. Uh, AJ Turner. I mean, this guy's, you know, I, I mean, these, these, these aren't, these just aren't SEC level running backs. Now you got some young guys. Who are these people here? Fenwick and Valentine. What? I mean, this sounds like the modern day Siegfried and Roy. Fenwick and Valentine. We, uh, what's this guy? Uh, freshman you got coming in. Is it Kevin Harris, Keon Harris, something like that? He may be something down the road, but again, it's the situation where I don't think that guy is ready to come in year one, uh, and be the go-to guy in an F SEC offense. I think you're going to have another year this year where you just have below average play from the running back position. It just doesn't look good. You lose your left tackle. You're going to move last year's right guard over to left tackle. You also have an incoming freshman, I think, that may get a look at left tackle. But, um, you know, offensive line, it may be a strong suit. I, not that I think it's elite, uh, but I, I'm, I'm not high on your quarterback position. I'm not high on your running back position. You lost one of the best receivers you've ever had in school history in Debo Samuel last year. Now, I do like his number two, Brian Edwards. The thing is, Brian Edwards got a lot of catches, uh, yards, and touchdowns because teams were so focused on Debo Samuel. That's not to say that Brian Edwards isn't any good and can't be um, a, a, a true number one receiver for you guys this year, but you have to, you, you have to look at reality here. Uh, you, you see this a lot. Number two wide receivers look a lot better when there's an elite number one on the other side that's drawing a lot of attention from defenses. The Georgia game is a great example. We shut Debo Samuel down. Uh, he might as well not even have played. Brian Edwards went up for over 100 yards receiving, I think, against Georgia. Now, what's going to happen this year when every team is putting their best DB on Edwards instead of Debo? We'll see. But he's not as good as Debo in my mind. I, so I, I think you take a step back at the wide receiver uh, position. Defense. I think defense, I think the glass is closer to half full on defense for South Carolina than it is on offense. You know, Will Muschamp's a defensive guy. Um, it seems like the defense is always a little bit ahead of the offense under any Will Muschamp team. And I think you have more talent on the defensive side of the ball. You've recruited pretty well at the defensive line. Uh, you got some work to do in the secondary. Jamias Williams, 
Georgia fans remember this guy, right? Uh, we, we, we tried to get Jamias Williams. He would have made a great punt returner for UGA. He didn't want to return punts. He wanted to play in the secondary. South Carolina, you know, they laughed uh, about it, thought they had something in Jamias Williams. Meanwhile, this guy's been there a couple of years, hasn't done anything. He's injured. I do think he'll get a start this year at the safety position. You also bring in a transfer from uh, Southern Cal uh, at the other safety position. But uh, your secondary work in progress. Uh, but I do think your defense will be, uh, will be okay. Uh, we'll see. Let's put the schedule up and look at it. I, I, I mean, this is just, like I said, I'm, I'm playing this straight down the middle here. But you open up with North Carolina, a neutral site game in Charlotte. I believe that's a 50-50 game. I think South Carolina is more talented than North Carolina. But I give the coaching advantage to North Carolina. They bring in Mac Brown. Now, this guy's been uh, sitting in a bowl of dust for the last five or six years. If he can get himself cleaned off, this could be an interesting game. I think South Carolina's the better team and will be favored. Uh, <laughs> Mac Brown's going to be looking to come out and prove a point week one, though. I hope South Carolina fans aren't sleeping on that game. Week two, your home opener, Charleston Southern. You shouldn't have any problem there. Um, I mean, I'm low on you for 2019, but not losing to the Citadel type of low on you, like what happened a few years ago. I think you'll handle Charleston Southern. But then you get Alabama at home, and I mean, this is just... I'm going to skip around a minute here, but I, I mean, Alabama at home, Georgia on the road, uh, Clemson at home, Florida at home. I mean, you, you play four... Is that four top ten teams you play? I, I mean, it's just a brutal schedule. Uh, but Alabama at home, then you turn around, uh, go on the road at Mizzou. Uh, Mizzou. This was a weird game last year. It rained, a huge delay in the game. You, you, you won a close one. Then you get Kentucky at home. We mentioned before you haven't beat them in four or five years, and that takes you into your first bye week. You come out of that on the road at UGA. Uh, brutal game for you. Uh, yeah. Listen, I'm not high on Tennessee either, but... Do I think South Carolina is going to be better or worse than last year? I think worse. Do I think Tennessee is going to be better or worse than last year? I think better. This could be the game that determines South Carolina's bowl eligibility on the road at Tennessee. Tennessee gets that win. Hard to see a path to, to a bowl game for South Carolina, but that'll be an interesting game to watch. Then you come home for a couple of games, take on Vandy and App State. Two absolute must-win games there, neither of which are gimmies. Now, App State, of course, everyone thinks App State is great because they beat Michigan. They don't, you know, they fail to realize that was 12, 13 years ago and they haven't beat a Power 5 team since then. You see this every year. Uh, casual college football fans look at a schedule. They see App State on it and they go, oh, don't, don't sleep at App State. They beat Michigan. Yeah, 12, 13 years ago and they haven't beat a Power 5 team since then. Um, I went through this. I, I ran in circles when Georgia played App State a couple of years ago with people in the comment section telling me App State was going to win because they beat Michigan 12 years ago. you got to win that game. Vandy, I don't think, is going to give me either, although I think they take a step back this year, too. You're clearly a better team than them, and, and these are two games South Carolina's got to win, and you can forget about a bowl. On the road at Texas A&M, I don't see you winning that game. I think Texas A&M is going to be a really good team this year. Jimbo Fisher, no matter what you think about him as a person, which he's a human trash can, uh, when it comes to coaching ability, he's in another stratosphere from Will Muschamp. you got to play him there. You've never beat Texas A&M since they joined the SEC. Hard to see it happening this year. Then you get a bye week before you take your annual beating against the Taters. Uh, you get to lose to them at, in front of your home crowd this year in williams Bryce Trailer Park. This is a brutal, brutal schedule. Um, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, if you go 7-5 and five and your five losses are to Alabama, Georgia, Florida, Texas A&M, and Clemson, you'll be the best five-loss team in America. Uh, you could potentially be a top 25 team if you go 7-5. and five. You wouldn't be ranked in the top 25 because of the five losses, but you could be one of the best 25 teams in America and be 7-5 and five if those were your only five losses. Hard to imagine that being the case, though. I, even if, even if you're better than the other seven teams on the schedule, Will Muschamp's not a good enough head coach to run through all seven of those teams. You would drop at least one more. I think the best case scenario here for South Carolina, brutally honest here, I think the best case scenario in 2019 for South Carolina is six and six and keep your bowl streak alive. I can't see you winning any more than six games. I, 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 I can't see a way you beat Alabama, Georgia, or Clemson. 100% no way. I don't see any chance at all. I don't think you're going to beat Florida or Texas A&M either. 
that puts you at five losses. And like I said, I, I don't think Muschamp is good enough to run through the rest of those seven games, even if South Carolina is the better team. And that means you got to beat uh, Tennessee. You got to beat Kentucky. You got to beat Mizzou. You got to beat Vandy. You got to beat North Carolina. You got to beat App State. I don't think you're beating all those teams. I'm going to say six and six is the absolute best case scenario. And if things go sideways and you lose a couple of these iffy 50 50 type games, three and nine. Uh, this could be a really, really bad year for South Carolina. My only question mark really about South Carolina when it gets down to the end of this season is if it does go bad and you end up with three or four wins, would that be enough for you guys to pull the trigger and get rid of Will Muschamp? I don't think it would. He's made three straight bowl games. I think he could go three and nine this year. I think you guys would still bring him back uh, for the following year. I do not think Will Muschamp will get fired this year. I know last year towards the end of the season, a lot of South Carolina fans we're sort of on the fence about Will Muschamp. I think South Carolina is going to ride it out with him. And you just have to ask yourself at this point, who's willing to come there? Well, you got to start looking at ex-Florida coaches, right? Because you tried Spurrier, that didn't work out. Uh, you, now you're trying uh, Muschamp, who, came, who used to be at Florida, that didn't work. Is McIlwain available? Would that be your next choice? I don't know. Best case scenario, six and six. I'm sorry. I don't see a way you win more than that. Things go wrong, three and nine. Have a great morning.